<laughs> hey, Wes and M here. What's up, people? Uh, this week we've got a different style of a show. This is going to be a two-parter. We'll be split up right down the middle, give or take. It is our first two-parter, and we're very excited to bring it to you. Um, very excited. Very excited. We're just uh, prefacing it with a little bit of uh, orientation on what the show is kind of going to be about. Then you're going to hear the regular intro, and all of this will probably be irrelevant. So I'm going to start that over. <laughs> I think you should leave that in. Do you? <laughs> Fuck it. Fuck it. We're beginners, man. Come on. Well, the show is... Our interview with Marin's medical transport driver. When we when when he approached her on the subject of being interviewed, the concept I pitched was to him was let's get a girl in here and we can talk about um, the dating these days, the pros and cons and the excitements and anxieties of dating today, and the easier softer way to get laid. Right. When he when he brought the idea to her attention, she seemed interested. She was a little hesitant and she seemed like the perfect specimen at the time. And at the time she said she was single. Turns out that wasn't the case. Um I found out the hard way by asking her out at the end of the show. And when my boy was crushed. I wouldn't say crushed. I was frustrated. I'd been dealing with a lot of... Uh, okay, slightly agitated. Um, I was upset. I was a little bit pissed off, and I focused a lot of my aggression towards her when it was stemming from a bunch of situations. A lot of uh, green lights. A lot of... Um, Red lights. Um, a lot of mixed signals. So, well, I'll just... I don't know how to put it because I don't want to bring attention to that situation, but I had brought up my ex-girlfriend a couple weeks ago and I got a response from her and I wasn't ready to speak to her yet, but Marin unconsciously accepted her friend's invite. I fucked up, man. And uh, it's the way things are going, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit better about it. We, we had a little uh, exchange, and it seems like uh, I can move past it. But yet, it happened. It frustrated me. Um, I've asked out a few girls, and I've gotten green lights. And then they just drop off the earth, you know? And it's fucked up, because I've got their... They give me their number, and I want to call them back and <laughs> go off on them, but uh, that's not going to help. And don't give out your number if you don't intend a call. Yeah, ladies, don't do that. Just to, I just fucked up, Just man. to boost your own ego, um, uh, accept the guys, tell the guy that you're going to go out on a date with them and, and, and give them your number just to, to uh, validate your own self-worth. I mean, what is that all about? I, I don't get that. You're putting a lot of bad juju in the world, and there's enough frustrated men out there. You don't need to add add me to that list. So, anyhow, um, my first reaction was to take the interview that I hadn't posted yet because I was waiting for that weekend to post it. And when I wasn't getting word back from her, I was getting more frustrated. And, of course... I was a little embarrassed to even mention the fact that I asked her out and she was standing me up. And but hey, that's the, that's what I want the show to be about is honesty and and what's going on in my life. You know, this is about as honest as it fucking gets. I'll tell you right now, um, I can understand Marin's in a relationship. He's got a family, and there's some things that he can't go into detail about. But you know, for for win or lose, that's that's what I'm going to bring into the show. Um, so. What I wanted to do was take a lot of her responses and kind of manipulate them with the the wonderful editing pro s of pro tools and with the, with the editor we are gods we can take pretty much whatever <laughs> responses they have and present our own questions and make it seem like they're answering questions that never were asked. This interview could have been manipulated so many different ways, and 
I give Wes credit because he took the higher road and uh, he chose this route instead. Because to be quite honest, it, this interview could have went totally different. Or at least it could have been aired totally different. So, you know. Um, yeah, you might have heard situations like this. I'll just throw one out there just to show you guys what I can do with this thing. So we recently had the anniversary of Farrah Fawcett and Michael Jackson's death. Sometimes early this week. That reminds me of my grandmother. She would always sign her birthday cards as Liz Taylor or Farrah Fawcett. I never had anything really sweet. My grandma speaks only Spanish. So I'm wondering if we could come up with something that I could have translated into Spanish so I could sign off on one of her birthday cards. My penis just died. Can I bury it in your ass? <laughs> wow, Brandy. That is absolutely inappropriate and offensive. Do you kiss your mother with that mouth? And you have a lot of nerve showing your face around here. So that's a taste of the little advantages you can have. Um, obviously, just in case you guys didn't catch that, that was a made up scenario. Um, so when you guys hear this recording, it's going to be a few weeks late. There may be some references to things that have happened. I think it was in the news we did that. Um, but we'll be splitting the show up. Second part will be aired next week. Uh, Marin will be in preparation for his transplant surgery. Woohoo! Yes, the woohoo. Everyone loves the woohoo. Everyone with you. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you want to talk about that a little bit, Marin? Um, I haven't asked, but that means you're. Your soon-to-be wife will be part of this procedure as well, correct? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, actually, uh, uh, we're actually thinking of doing the show next week, actually, from from the hospital. That was one of our choices. I'm actually going in for preparation uh, Saturday the 7th, and my uh, transplant will take place on the 12th. Um, they have to do some cleaning of the blood and some other little things. But, um, yeah, so wish me luck on that, you know. And uh, if all goes well, you'll you'll hear me back. And if things don't go well, this will be the last time you hear my fucking voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And on that note, on with the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, just so you know, the show must go on, Marin, and your seat will be filled. Oh, <laughs> already have plenty of people lining up. I bet. <laughs> This, this job isn't easy. <laughs> well, that remains to be seen if, if you're part of the show or if not. If I can do this show, anybody if, can do this show. <laughs> if you do kick off, it might end up being easier. <laughs> I'm just wrong, Liz. <laughs> you're just wrong. But just so you know, I am pulling for you, man. All right. <laughs> um, well... Let's dispense with all the morbidity and let's kick off the show. This is part one of the two parter. Hope you guys enjoy it. Sacred Swim with Wes and Al. So we're going to start off with Marin giving some shout outs. Yes, this is a new thing that we're, we're trying out. We want to let the listeners know that uh, you're being loved. <laughs> uh, I want to give a birthday shout outs to Lobo and Clark who turned 38 on Monday the 11th. Uh, Ryan Rushy turned 37 on Tuesday the 12th. And actually our guest, Brandy, turned 27 Wednesday on the 6th. Happy belated. So thank happy belated you. birthday to you, Brandy. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I want to give a shout out to our new audience member, uh, Carol Luna, who's actually in the studio with us. Yeah. Uh, Joanna Palazzar, 
Tamara Clark, Gloria Hernandez, this is where it gets hard, Michael Trevisio, and Christopher Cornejo. Did I get that right? Did I roll the, did I roll the R on that? Pretty Something good? fantastic. All right. So we want to give a shout out to you guys, let you guys know that that uh, we appreciate you listening, and we hope Chris you also show. sent you a message to read it. No, I did not. Oh, yeah, said the one who said thank you for not leaving the show. Yes, yeah, I got glad that. Glad to hear you didn't leave the show. Yes, glad to hear that I didn't leave the show. So I appreciate that, man. Shout out, Chris. There you go. Corny hole. Cornejo. Corny hole. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna start off with my monologue. I went to dinner uh, recently with a couple, and uh, something stood out to me. And I'm uh, being a single person, judge every couple that I see. You know what I mean? Like every natural single person, like fuck you for being happy. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, I'm watching them as, and I purposely lag behind so I can observe. I'm that type of person. And so uh, as they're leaving the restaurant. He's leading like the alpha male, you know, and uh, she's trailing behind him. And I'm observing how he caters to her needs. And it looks like she, he's not at all, really. And, and immediately I'm criticizing like uh, I could be a better boyfriend than that. Fuck him. You know what I mean? <laughs> but and then and then I'm skipping myself aside, in check a chance. because it's like they're just that far into the relationship you know what i mean and so i watch them as they go to the vehicle and he, he's just on his own track and she's kind of leading behind him or following behind him and uh i notice that he's not even gonna open the door for her you know and that's that's part of my etiquette um i automatically assume that should be part of everyone every other yeah uh, absolutely I'm thinking, uh, well, well, should I be the guy here? Like, like the outclassist dude? <laughs> Maybe run up and open a door for you. And the old me probably would have done that, but now that I have a program that I kind of got to follow by the, the guidelines of like keeping myself in check and just right. let situations go. And so I just, you know, got in the vehicle. Open your own fucking door, lady. And then, and then the, thought, <laughs> the thought creeped into my head. When is that okay? How far into the relationship? And my sarcastic reaction to that is I figure when the bra and panties stop matching, <laughs> that's when it's okay. You know, because I've lived with a couple of girls and when you're first dating before you move in together, you're like, Ooh, that's some nice lingerie. That, that's some hot shit right there. And then you move in with them and you're like, where the fuck did that shit go? What happened? <laughs> what happened? She does my laundry and her laundry. And I never see any of the, those panties and, and, and bras and shit. We're right. just borrowing her friends. <laughs> or did she just get chucked away? Are those like, like, uh, uh, they're not that hard to fold. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> they're not that hard to fold. I guess they're they're easy to get lost too. Like maybe someone else. Is maybe vehicle. after three or four years, yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> I've been in a relationship for eight years, and I still open the truck door for my lady. And even after I open the wow. truck door and get wow. her in, she always reaches over to the other side and opens my side of the door. That's just like a movie. I've and, never had that. And I had really? in the beginning, <laughs> eight years. Eight years. Just, just the, I can see that becoming. Routine, yeah, because she's doing her part by opening her, yours up for right. you. If that doesn't happen for me, then it kind of like she'll do it once in a while, and then I got to break out the keys too, right? That way, and then there's a little slight quick initial resentment there, then it kind of breaks the routine. But if yeah. if that happens every single time, it's like Marin, as soon as I come in, I set my keys down in my <laughs> ashtray. <laughs> That's part of my routine. Right. So when you go to get to the car with, with your lady and she automatically reaches over to, you know, unlock, then it's part of your routine. You can expect that. Right. And you kind of take pride in that, too. So like, and I'm a creature of routine. I have to have it that way. Or else I'm wondering where my keys are, Marin. <laughs> Situation you're very familiar with. Yes. He's I lost am. my keys before. Uh, he loses his keys all the time. Oh, my. You have, I hear about yeah, that all I, the time. Yes, I do. I do. That's a funny thing. Uh, I don't know if it's funny, ha ha, funny, but I've lost, <laughs> I've lost so many. It's not Joe Pesci funny. I no, dude. I've lost so many fucking keys, dude. I, I literally, and my mind gets to spinning. I'm like, fuck, do I really need to change my fucking? There's so many sets of my keys out there, dude. <laughs> I might have to go change my whole ignition, dude. Do you have because do you have the the, the spare key attached to the vehicle? Dude, yet? I got like seven <laughs> spare keys, dude. I got my key. I have.